Yeah. It's in the Ohio Indian removal. Yeah. Andrew Jackson, um, Indian removal. Now, this is for Ohio. So what the defendant's talking about is the fact that he must have did this along the whole damn eastern seaboard. By the time they got to um, Georgia and Florida, the lower parts of Georgia and Florida, and got with the Seminoles, who's the Yamasee, and the Gullah, um, the Kuchi Gullah people, they couldn't, they couldn't pretend with them. Mm -hmm. Battle of the Fallen Timber, Cincinnati was founded. Oh, wow. Treaty of Greenfield. So they did treaties with us in the 1803 the Louisiana Purchase, which they never purchased it. Exactly. In 1803, Ohio became a state. So the same year Ohio became a state is the same year that they claimed that the Ohio, that um, Louisiana Purchase was purchased was 1803, which is a damn lie. All right? The Empress told us specifically that Thomas Jefferson gave his sentiments at the time that the Louisiana was never purchased. All right. Matter of fact, the fifteen million dollars in which that was supposed to have been in gold, in which that's supposed to have been sent to Napoleon, never was received. All right. All of it was never received. In fact, um, they come to find out that um, portions of the funds, almost four million dollars worth of it, was sunk beneath the ocean floor off the coast of um, Florida, and between Florida and Cuba. All right. So that means if full service was never rendered. The money, so finances. Therefore, it was never. All right. Therefore, it was never um, purchased. All right. So let's let's continue on. This is part of the removal here, as you see. The guns. This who was here that they fought against, as you see. What do I remember this one? The Shunis, very archaeological and linguistic um, evidence so suggests that the Shuni are descendants of, are the, descendants four of the four ancient, ancient people, the four ancient people who inhabited the Ohio Valley for hundreds of years prior to the European contact. The Shunis abandoned Ohio, but it wasn't because they wanted to, um, but it says abandon the fate Ohio in the face of the Iroquois attacks, all right? Because the Iroquois, um, obviously at that time, um, played a quote-unquote part in the removal along with the United States Corporation, i.e., as you see, it says here, attacked the 17th century, and but many returned in the 18th, all right? That's century. deep. So then you had two Native Americans fighting each other in the midst of a fight. Exactly. That's some. If that ain't some nigga shit. Right. Right. That's the same thing that's been going on with us um, for the last 400 some odd years, as they say, because we was those people. And so here it says, although Tecumseh fought for the British during the War of 1812. You see that? Mm. Many Shonies fought on the side of the United States. You see that? Mm. So, nevertheless, fought? under the terms of the 1817 foot of the Rapid right. Treaty, they agreed to limit themselves to small reserves. The Shonies were interested in Christian doctrine. Was not. Oh yeah, they weren't interested in Christian doctrine, but they were willing to adopt other elements of your American culture, such as the whole agriculture. Now, agriculture. Right, as if they was the massive plow. agriculture. Oh, the plow. Plow agriculture. Wait a minute, but the plow was created by um brother, wasn't he? Well, if it was, you know, that's who ended up getting it, right? <laughs> and as you've seen, they had the Iroquois, right? It says Tecumseh, they fought for who? For the British, right? And most of the Shoni for the side of the United States. So the Iroquois and Tecumseh, 
who was a Chiricoy, who was Cherokee, fought for the British. <laughs> and the show was fought for the United the States. British. They was probably enslaved by the British. Right? So, so that's how you got the War of 1812 there, as you see. And just like they did during the Civil War, had us fighting against who? You had Negroes fighting for the South, and you had Negroes fighting for the North. So here's the same thing that took place, you know, once again, just actually 50 years, more, just a little more than 50 years prior to, all right, 1812. So this is the nonsense in which that's been taking place, and it's still taking place today. Mm. Right. He's doing the Europeanized version of the Native Americans, i.e. us. That's the plow. This is this the plow that they own. Um, it was doing the nonsense over. You see that? That's the plow. This is the plow that they was that they was doing. All right. This this that was that was the technology that they was happy to give, fighting and happy to you know. All right. Right. So right here. Black Hoof was a foremost Swan political leader during the first three decades of the 19th century. He supported a strategy of accommodating white settlers. Since Ohio Indians were already experienced and effective agriculturists and traders, he reasoned that it should not be impossible for the Swanee to adapt to the ways of the new white majority without moving. He supported Quaker missionary efforts Quaker. to teach mm -hmm. Swanee men to use plows and women to make textiles. The Quakers did not promote Christian doctrine, so Swanee's beliefs sure. were, were dominated. The Great Spirit has already furnished us with a religious suit to our nature and capacity, and it's best for each Shuni and Americans to keep the ways in which the Great Spirit has given them. Sure. That's yeah. what Black Black Horse. The Black Hoof said that. Kathy Casa. Mm-hmm. So that must be Black Hoof. They lighten them up a little bit, obviously. <laughs> However, unlike Black Hoof, all right, his name was Colonel Lewis. That's what his name ended up being, but his name originally was Quata. Wapi was a supporter of the removal. Now, he was mm. a supporter of the removal, right? Mm -hmm. He pointed out the discrepancies between traditional Shoni beliefs and the new way of life surrounded by whites. And I agree. All right, so this is the same thing that we went over during the day on. Think about it. The um, civil rights movement. Should we integrate or should we separate? This is the same thing which that took place here with the so-called um, northern, Midwest, native people. And as you see, it says, he and his fraction wield more influence in Lewistown, where Shoni and Seneca cohabited, all right? Um, he will, he willingness, his, his willingness to move, to move west. west garnish him much attention and support from government officials, all right? So, mm -hmm. this is... What was going on? Quatawapi. 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 All right, so. Quatawapi was right. Yeah, Quatawapi was like, yeah, let's get the hell away. And uh, kind of, um, his casa was like, now we need to stay around with them and get this plow. Because <laughs> Let's stay and get this plow. <laughs> All right, so, so as you see, now, 
Now, for those who have never read the Treaty of Camp Holmes or the Camp Holmes Treaty, if you never read the Camp Holmes Treaty, you will find out that the Seneca was in treaty with the Wichita or Washita people. So that means that we was all in treaty together. All right? And somebody betrayed the treaty. All right? As a matter of fact, we have a story to tell that we had a brother by the name of Aaron. He was exiled from out of um, New England, well, out of England, and he came to the United States and got exiled from out of the United States and went to Canada. But he wanted to come into the United States in order to see his son, all right, to see his family, his son. And what happened was is that he was able to come in without documentation. And at the border, all right, at the border, they asked him, all right, about his affiliation with Washington, and he was able to get through. However, there was a Seneca Indian who was there also. And the Seneca Indian asked him because he heard, overheard him talking to um, the officers at the border. And they, and he said, what was the name of your tribe that you said? And he said, Washita. And the Seneca Indian said, well, just don't kill us. All right, now, now think about what that means. That means somebody betrayed that treaty. And this is what we're seeing today, all right? Because we know that um, the Washita was about separation, <laughs> okay? So here it is, let's look at this here. All right, the Indian Territory, 1795 to 1817, the Indian Territory, 1818, removal, all right? Ottawa Town, Lower Sandusky, Upper Sandusky, which is known as Waydine, Seneca, as you see, Ottawa was here, the Ottawa, the Seneca, the Shoney, even the Delaware, who would be the Moors, who was called the Delaware Moors. In particular, the Delaware Moors was also called the Lenape, or part of the Nanakotes, all right? So all of them lived here, as you see. Here's go Cleveland, all right? So actually, this area over here would be Cincinnati, all right? In between would be Columbus, right? All of that. All right, no, so. Cincinnati's at the bottom. Yeah, right here. Columbus. Right, but all of that, right. Columbus, Cleveland, right? That's basically what you see there. And so this was the removal. So all you niggers get out of here. <laughs> okay? That's what happened. So we come on over here, and you had the Treaty of the Foot in the Rapid 1817, Ohio Indian Reservation 1818, from a map by Robert, uh, Roberta Stockwell. By 1815, the white population of Ohio had grown to more than 300,000, while the Native American population declined to about 3,000. Through several treaties, the 1817 and 1818, the Seneca, Ottawa, and Shoney, and uh, uh, Wayanta, Nations gave up more than 4.2 million acres, but reserved themselves scattered parcels totaling less than 200,000 acres. All right, look at that. Now that's some serious land thieving. This is the treaty. All right, this is the treaty right here. You can see that. This is the actual treaty. copy of it, right. All right, let, let me show you that plow again that they were so impressed over. All right, that this is, just lets you know how silly our minds are, our mentalities are. All right, um, here go the Indian removers right here. All right, this is the biggest one right here. Thomas Jackass Jackson, or Thomas Jackass, or Andrew Jackass, I should say. All right, so here, um, Andrew Jackson, or as I say, Andrew um, Jackass, all right here. 
He states specifically, towards the aborigines of the country, no one can indulge a more friendly feeling than myself. You see that? This is during 1830. Towards the aborigines of the country, no one can indulge a more friendly feeling than myself. Well, you know, that maybe, I don't know about that one. Right here, he also says, that those tribes cannot exist surrounded by our settlements and in the continuous connection with our citizens is, is certain. They have neither their intelligence, their industry, their moral habits, nor the desire of improvements which are essential to any favorable change in their condition. They must necessarily yield to the force of circumstances and ere long disappear. This is Andrew Jackson's fifth annual message to Congress, 1833. Now this is amazing because um, what was the what was the comment that was made um, of concerning um, what you heard about the Native Americans by the Europeans? The woman said that you shouldn't. What was it that you wasn't using it? Come on. Oh, okay. There um, you go. Let's let's put it, let's get it on here. The woman was saying oh. to a Native American. Um, he was like, you stole all our land. And she was like, you wasn't using it. Right. Right. So that's the, you that's, you right. Wasn't doing nothing with it. You wasn't doing nothing with it. And that is essentially the remarks in which that it was made right, that was made right here. That those tribes cannot exist surrounded by our settlements and in continually, continual contact with our citizens is certain. They have neither the intelligence, the industry, the moral habits, nor the desire of improvement which are essential to any favorable change in their condition. They must necessarily yield to the force of circumstance and ere long disappear. So he just said that they had not the desire to change their circumstances. Mm. All right. Um, they didn't have the desire of improvement. This is what Andrew Jackson, or Andrew Jackass um, stated. All right. So understand that this is the, that was the mentality of the majority of Europeans as it still is today. All right? And I'm talking about those in the political arena. All right? Um, this is the reason why they only have um, certain blood types. All right? I won't get into all of that, but um, in Pacific, um, the negative blood types or RH factor um, RH negative factor blood types are the ones, all right? All right, this is Lewis Cass, or Case. Um, right, General James um, Finlay. Right, this is Southwest Ohio and Indian Remover Act, which is what we were just talking about. Right, this is um, right, James um, Cincinnati um, Congressman James Faley um, voted in favor of the Re Indian Removal Act, as we just showed. And United States Jacob um, Barnett of Cincinnati voted against it. All right, earlier as a justice of the Ohio Supreme Court, he had ruled in favor of the Indians who had been cheated out of a parcel of land. All right. So they show in a constant battle between um, what is going on here between those who agreed and those who disagreed when it came to the they removal. Are, All right. This is Margaret Gray Eye Solomon was a member of the family of the Dr. Gray Eyes listed as she immigrated from Kansas but returned to Ohio in 1865 with her second husband, all right? This was called um, Yandot Mustard Roll, 1843. Right, 1843, Wyandotte chiefs paired a record of the Wyandotte travel west, noting that the ages, genders, and the heads of 
the household before leaving their land in Ohio. Now look at the names, y'all. Why do they have European names? Because they made the Native Americans, i.e. Indians, i.e. indigenous aboriginal people, i.e. you and I, our family members, give up their native names and look at the names from which that they was forced to take on. You will see white, all right, you see Johnston, Robert Tell, Lewis, John, Walker, all right, these are the last names, Armstrong, Washington, Clark, all right, these are the names in which that they was forced all right, that they was forced to relinquish their native indigenous aboriginal names to take on European names. All right. In the West, said, despite the sunny promises of the United States treaty negotiator, great problems awaited the Indians after the removal in the West. The climate and terrain was significantly different from where they were used to in Ohio. Even more surprising, the lands to which that the immigrants were sent were not clearly defined. As a result, they became embroiled in conflicts with Native Americans already living and other living there in other immigrant tribes and white settlers. Most of the Ohio Indians were forced to move again, sometimes multiple times. It was not until 1867 that another treaty created new lands for them in northeastern Oklahoma and southeastern Missouri. All right, so remember Oklahoma, Oklahoma. That's where they were sending everybody. All right, this is where they sent the Native Americans on the eastern seaboard was off. Now, everybody did not accept that. There was hundreds and thousands of people still within those areas who remained to stay. And the dark ones in particular got, um, got classified as Negroes. All right? Got classified as Negroes. All right? So as you see, I'm out of Ohio. Right. Yes, remove Andrew Jackass from off the money and put Harriet Tugman because she was part of the real Native people and that's the reason why they was going to put her there because they got you thinking that she just came from over from Africa 400 years ago from a lineage of enslaved captives. That's not true and they know it's not true. This is why they're going to put her on the $20 bill instead of Andrew Jackass.